Good afternoon to all of you and thank you for being here for this presentation about my work. My name is Joana Barreto and I'm a PhD student at the Faculty of Human Kinetics in Lisbon. And this work is part of my PhD project and was done with the collaboration of some colleagues from the Biomechanics Laboratory here at our faculty. So our study is entitled Concurrent Validation of 3D Joint Angles During Gymnastics Performance of very complex techniques using inertial measurement units. And to start this presentation, I would like to ask you to watch these videos of a gymnast performing a very complex technique that, as you can imagine, is very hard to analyze inside of the laboratory. So our idea was to have a system that allows us to analyze this type of performance in these complex techniques in gymnastics or other acrobatic sports in order to uh, do this evaluation or assessment in the context of practice. So to start, our main goal was to assess the validity of an inertial measurement system unit, in this case the Exense MVN link, in measuring joint angles. And we used Qualysis, which is an optoelectronic system, as a criteria, so we could compare data from the two systems. And in our study, we had the participation of 10 gymnasts from national level. And as you can see here in this figure, uh, we placed directly on their skin 17 inertial measurement units or sensors that are represented by the orange squares and also 37 anatomical tracking markers represented by the white circles. Finally, uh, we placed also eight clusters that are represented by the orange squares with the white circles inside. After the preparation of the gymnasts, we collected some anthropometric measures to scale Exense biomechanical model, and also we calibrated the two systems. For the Exense, we calibrated by asking the participant to stand in an end pose, then walk forward, return to the initial point in end position, and repeat again the end pose for several seconds. This last end pose was used as a static calibration for the optoelectronic system qualities. After this, gymnasts had some time to perform the task in study that is a round off backhand spring that I will show in this video, but this task was chosen because it is uh, learned in an early stage of gymnastics practice but also it is performed at all levels of competitive gymnast gymnastics. And you can see here in the video that was done during the data session in our laboratory. So before we could analyze our data, we had to build a biomechanical model for the optoelectronic system qualities. And because we know from the literature that some errors can emerge when we try to compare two different biomechanical models, we decided to give to this model the same definitions as the biomechanical model of Exense, including the same origins, dimensions and anatomical axis orientations for body segments. We calculated then joint angles and for example for joints neck, shoulder and for the angle between the thorax side we calculated abduction, adduction, flexion, extension and also internal, external uh, angles. While for elbow, wrist, knee and ankle, we only calculated flexion and extension because the, it's the most important axis of movement during this, the performance of this technique. So to analyze our data, we choose three measures. The first one was the coefficient of multiple correlation that allow us to see the waveform similarity of the two systems. And we considered, according to the literature, that an acceptable value would be equal or superior to 0 0.8. The second measure was the root mean square error <coughs> and we considered that an error up to 10 degrees would be acceptable for our purposes of using this inertial system in the context of practice. And finally, we also performed a t-test using the techniques of statistical parametric mapping to see uh, the differences between all the points in the two waveforms. Also, this technique allows us to see when the differences are occurring in the movement. Our main results show that for shoulder, thorax, thigh and ankle flexion extension angles, the errors were above the 10 degrees or the value that we were expecting. But also for these joint angles, statistical parametric mapping showed some significant statistical differences 
as you can see here in these images with the grey areas. Also, for neck abduction adduction, we saw that the waveform similarity between the two, wave, uh, the two curves was very poor. But the good news is that for the rest of the joint angles that we measured, we had very good to excellent coefficient of multiple correlation values, and also the errors between the two systems were below the 10 degrees, that was our criteria value. For some of them, uh, as example, neck flexion extension, knee flexion extension, and also thorax tie abduction adduction, statistical parametric mapping show us some differences between the two systems. However, these differences occur during very small temporal periods of the movement, as you can see here, also in these graphics. To conclude, or to present you the main conclusions of this work, first of all, we believe uh, that the differences between the two systems and also the errors that we found from some of the joint angles are due because there still are differences between the two biomechanical models. And despite our efforts and our methodology to uh, approximate the definitions of these two biomechanical models, the differences between them affected our data. So we believe that this is something to improve in future work and future research. However, in a general way, uh, we think that with our results, Exense MVN Link is a valid instrument to measure movement kinematics during the performance of acrobatic sports and gymnastics, for example, except for thorax tie flexion extension and also for neck abduction adduction, because we found some uh, high errors and also a poor waveform similarity, as I mentioned before. From a practical point of view, we have no questions that the system has a lot of advantages, uh, being the first one to, uh, to provide us uh, data in the real context of practice, so we don't need to bring the gymnast or the athlete to a laboratory. And also we can evaluate more complex techniques. Uh, it also allows to provide uh, feedback to the coach, so the coach can give feedback to the athlete in real time and the real context of practice. So it is uh, a huge advantage from our point of view. However, from our results and because uh, we don't know more studies uh, done in gymnastics using uh, this type of methodology or instrument, we are not confident in using it to compare gymnastics performance, for example. So, our final message for you uh, as researchers or coaches or even athletes is that this system can be used to provide some feedback in the real context of practice in this kind of sport. However, the system, the system has some limitations uh, that the coaches, athletes and research, researchers need to be aware of and need to have some caution to interpreting the data uh, so they are giving the correct feedback. feedback. Also, we believe that more studies need to be done to, uh, to assess the validity of this equipment uh, for acrobatic sports. So, thank you for all of your attention. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing your questions.